All right, good morning, fifth grade. Batten down the hatches, wipe the sleepies from your eyes, and get ready for lesson 48. Today we're talking about reading and writing whole numbers in expanded notation. Now, this word notation just means how you write it. Notation means writing. Expanded means make something longer. So however we're going to write whole numbers, it's going to be longer than the usual way of writing it. And let's start off with a quick little review because I think some people are kind of fuzzy about place value. This first three on the right hand side, I call the no name group. And it's just ones, tens, hundreds. Then you have 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 in the thousand group. Okay, over here later on, we would have one, ten, and hundred in the millions group. Okay, so I'm hoping that refreshes your memory for you because it's going to play very importantly into expanded notation. So here's the explanation expanded notation. For each digit you have to write, in parentheses, write digit times the place value. And if you have more than one digit, you'll have to close out your parentheses, write a plus sign, and use the next digit times the place value. You don't have to write anything for the digit zero because writing nothing Nothing is the same as zero. We've been saying that for a long time, right? So just as an example here, if we had the number 590, that's the usual standard way of writing it, and they wanted us to write it in expanded notation, I'd start with a parentheses. My first digit is five, right? And five is in the hundreds place. So 5 times 100. Close out your parentheses, and I have another digit. So I'll go with a plus sign. Start a new parentheses, and now my digit is 9, and he's sitting in the tens place, right? So I'm going to write 9 times 10. Close out your parentheses. But I don't have to write 0 times 1. I can just leave nothing, because nothing is the same as zero. So if you're one of those people who are a little bit fuzzy about place value still, I highly recommend writing yourself out six little lines, go one, ten, hundred, one thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, and put the numbers in there to help you. So to start off with 74,000 in expanded notation, looks to me like the sevens go on here. The fours go on here, right to the left of the comma, and then we would have three zeros, right? Zero in the ten spot, zero in the one spot. Now we are ready to do some expanded notation. So let's take a look. I have to go and write with parentheses each time. Start a parenthesis. My first digit is a seven. 7 times what's my place value? Looks to me like he's in the 10,000 spot, right? Close out your parentheses. Go with a plus sign. My next digit down is a 4, so I'm going to need a new parentheses. 4 times that place value. He's in the 1,000 spot. Close out your parentheses. Do I need to write anything else? No, I don't, because nothing is the same as zero. Now, at a bare minimum, if you're fuzzy, you have a place value chart on page 40 of your book. So there is no reason at all not to understand place value, which was lesson seven, now that we're on lesson 48. Check out this one. It says write 123,006 in expanded notation. So if you're fuzzy about your place value, write yourself out six lines and label them. 
I have 123 in my thousand group. I have zero in the hundreds, zero in the tens, and six in my one spot. Looks to me like I'm ready to start writing some expanded notation. It's going to begin with the parenthesis. Digit times place value. My first digit up is one times the number, which is the hundred thousand spot. Close out your parentheses, add a plus sign, start a new parentheses. Next digit, I have a two times 10,000 for that place value, right? Close out your parentheses, go with a plus sign, and my next digit is three. So start a new parentheses, three times his place value, which is a thousand. Close out his parentheses, we're almost done. And the last digit I have to concern myself with is the six. So I need a new parentheses, six times one. Okay, I did tell you expanded means writing it longer, right? Expanded notation, the long way of writing numbers. Right, 200,525 in expanded notation. So if you're fuzzy, write yourself six lines and label what they are. We have 200 in my thousands group, 525 in what Mr. Hines calls the no-name group, right? Because we don't see a group name after them. And let's get ready to do it all over again. Starts off with a parentheses, as always. My first digit up, I have two in the hundred thousands place. So two times 100,000. Close out your parentheses. Get ready for a plus sign. My next one, I have five sitting in my hundred spot, right? So new parentheses, five times 100. Close out your parentheses. Add a plus sign, go to the next digit. Start a new parentheses. The digit this time is two. His place value is 10. Close out that parentheses. I have one last digit, so I'm gonna need one more plus sign and one more parentheses, and I go with five times one. Close out your parentheses. I don't have to write anything for my zeros, right? All right, so that was expanded notation, the long way of writing numbers. Now, one more word, standard form. Standard just means the usual way of writing numbers. So they're also going to give you some things in expanded notation. They want you to write what the usual number is. Here, I do highly recommend writing yourself out six lines, label them if you need to, and remember, fill in any empty places with zeros. So let's take a look. I have a nine, and they're telling us they want it in the 100,000 spot. So here's my 100,000 spot, so that's where I'm going to put the 9, right? Now I have a 7, and they want that 7 in the 10,000 spot, so I'm going to put my 7 right here. My last digit I have is a 6, but they only want the 6 in the tens place. My last step I have to do, what do I do with these three spots that don't have any numbers? Fill in any empty places with zeros. So I need a zero in the thousands because I did not have thousands. I need a zero in the hundreds and I'm going to need a zero in my ones for a final number of 970,000. 60. How about this one in standard form? Let's start off. I have 8 in the 10,000 spot. So I'm going to put an 8 there. 
My next digit I have is a one, and they want him in the hundreds spot. So let's put a one in the hundreds spot. Now I have a two, and they're telling us to put him in the ten spot. And lastly, I have a three that they want in the one spot. It says fill in any empty places with zero, so they didn't have a 1,000. So I'm going to put a zero there. My question to you all right now is, do I have to put a zero in right here? Do you ever start a whole number with a zero no, you don't have to fill in all the empty places with zeros because if it's at the front, we never start a whole number with a zero, right? One more, right in standard form. Our first digit up is a nine and they're telling us to put it in the hundred thousands place. So let's go ahead and do that. Then they give us another nine that they want in the one thousands place. Then they're asking for another nine in the hundreds place. And lastly, one last nine that they want in the ones place. And as always, Fill in any empty places that are not at the beginning of a number with zeros. So in standard form, I have 909,909. Check this one out because I know some people every year stumble on this. Draw a rectangle. So I drew a rectangle. And it says, shade one-seventh of it. So that should be easy enough. Let's go ahead and shade one-seventh. And they want to know what percent of the circle is shaded. We've been doing this a lot, but they've been doing it in fourths and fifths and thirds. All those pieces that you have fraction manipulatives in your math folders, right? We don't have any seventh pieces. So what do we do? Do you remember? This whole rectangle represents a hundred percent, right? So you would have to take that hundred percent then, and we're actually going to have to divide it out by hand because we don't have it written down anywhere for us. So we can divide a hundred by seven. 7 goes into 10 one whole time, multiplies back for 7. It's going to subtract for 3, and I'm going to bring down this 0, right? 7 divides into 30 four whole times, multiplies back for 28, and it's going to subtract for 2, correct? Just like we were talking about yesterday, we got to write this guy as a mixed number. You can't say 14 remainder 2. That remainder of 2, that's my numerator. My divisor of 7, that's going to be my denominator. And don't forget your percent sign. So 1 7th is equal to 14 and 2 sevenths percent. Hopefully you did not hit fast forward because I'm not going to be real sympathetic if nobody knows how to do this problem today. So that is the end. If you're fuzzy on place value, I highly recommend the chart on page 40 of your math book. Also, Scratch piece of paper is always a good idea for the Socrative quiz. Good luck.